we have been denying feelings for so long, mm -hmm. saying that the mind is superior, right? And and the mind is not superior. Um, the the mind is the ego, and the ego basically what we call our personality, our 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 ego is a conglomeration of all the thought forms that we've grown up with in our world, from our parents, what we've been taught in our educational system, what we're being taught on the media, whatever. It's a, it's a conglomeration. And the ego loves to stay in, in control of our life because it controls the illusionary life. It keeps us living the life of illusion, which takes us away from our authentic self. So basically, what we need to do in confronting our beliefs and our old thought forms is we're actually confronting the ego so that we can become a soul-infused personality. And our soul is nothing other than our authentic self. So if we say the mind and the world of ideas is one realm, okay, fine. It teaches us how to question, how to analyze, how to critique. These are all important qualities. How to discern wisdom, very important. Drop down into the emotions and say, are our feelings in congruence with our thoughts? Drop down into the body <laughs> and, and realize the body now has to assimilate all of this information, but in a conscious way. Mm -hmm. And negating the body is negating the earth. And we have negated the earth. We're in a right mess right now because of how we've negated the earth. And if we come back into the body again, we are also going to come back into alignment with the earth. And natural intelligence is the same as spiritual intelligence. Absolutely. And in this book, the book discusses the ego quite a bit and the quality of thoughts, and it talks about negative versus positive. And so what I want to do is get into a little nuanced conversation about that. It says that it repeated negative thoughts strengthen the ego, it gives it some grist, something to chew on to control, where positive thoughts lessen the grip of the ego on us. Now, that said, you ha can have positive thoughts that are just, you know, mania, basically, pleasure-seeking mania versus mm -hmm. a positive thought that's more congruent with your body intelligence, with natural intelligence. Can you talk about that for a moment so people can begin to discern between those two? Yeah, gosh, that's a really good point. Um, when you're talking about um, mania, it's a trying to escape the journey right and um and so when we have more pain than we have pleasure we have two choices we either seek the reason for our pain and change it um which is what i'm recommending right <laughs> Because it doesn't go away, folks. It doesn't go away. No matter how much chocolate, alcohol, sex, or drugs you do, it <laughs> doesn't go away. So find the reason for it. Or we do try to escape it, which the ego wants to do. The ego wants to get us off the journey. It wants us to get us off the track because otherwise it can't control us. And if we stay on the track of this unraveling process, it's not just pain that emerges, it's pleasure because the ahas, you know, are wow. And then we just automatically start rising to a higher frequency. And we know that the DNA, when we're in negative thoughts, it contracts and it expands when we are in positive thought and when we are our dna expands we're starting to rise to higher frequencies 
when we rise to higher frequencies, all of a sudden, our truth changes. Uh, people say, oh, I know the truth. Well, heck oh heck, my truth continues to evolve. And if people <laughs> look at it, they'll realize the truth that they held for themselves at age 20 is not the truth of age 50 or 60 anyway. So it's a continually evolving process. Absolutely. So when so I think you answered that well in terms of that kind of mania, which is to distract us. So we can tell the difference when we get all excited about something that is really taking us down this supercharged, manic, pleasurable road, which is what conspiracy theory, for example, does when it's actually super grandiose versus conspiracy theory that is simply reality that's being hidden. Those are two different things. And you know, because you can feel the difference in your body when one's just getting you totally souped up like, oh, I'm in the know, no one knows this but me. That's a distraction. That's a manic kind of quote, positive condition. Let's talk about neutral positive or positive neutral, because this is talked about quite a bit in the book. It's, it's a little more Zen to find this place inside ourself, and then we'll let that lead to non-attachment and why it's important. You've really put your finger on something important, and that is that the ego wants to divide things into the thems and the us's. The ego is all about separation. It's about separation from spirit, separation from the earth. Um, you know, it's just us you've got to look after. You've only got to look after yourself, not others. So if we're trying to disarm the ego, we have to face all of our feelings of separation. And in, in doing that, we're caught creating in ourselves this pause and this pause is what I call the neutral positive. And it's being non-judgmental, but awake. So you're still able to discern, but ultimately, call me a Pollyanna, but ultimately, it's important to have an optimistic view that spirit knows what it's doing. The universal consciousness knows what it's doing and that it will create the situation that will trigger each of us to change, to go from being the caterpillar where we greedy eat up all the world to the butterfly. And right now we are in the cocoon. We're in the cocoon stage of humanity's evolution where the caterpillar way does not work any longer. We know that, right? And our organizations are falling apart. The structures are falling apart. And so when you go into the cocoon, you start questioning everything. And in questioning everything, we've got to get beyond this blaming, shaming, the anger, the frustration. Let them fall on us, but, but, it, but be able to stay in neutral as these pass through us. We know that each emotion gets a certain kick right, that we will get. And if we're getting this kick from an emotion, and a lot of people, as you said, are emotional junkies. They just want to get this stimulation. And the ego loves to create the stimulation. So when we get this kick, if we can just stay in neutral for those seconds without reacting, it will pass. The shame and the blame and the guilt and the anger will pass. And we'll be able to calmly discern 
what what the truth that is available to us right now is. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you might also want to consider joining Patreon, which allows me to keep all of this content free and available to everyone. And if you're looking for like-minded souls, you might also enjoy my online community called Our Neighborhood. Links to join are in the description.